Math tutors charge $40 per hour. Help me help you by disrupting YouTube's algorithm. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Scroll along the bottom with your cursor. This shows where number one is, number two, number three, and number four. Quick and easy way to jump from problem to problem for your convenience. There's another way you can easily jump from problem to problem. Look in the video description section and find the table of contents. Click on the timestamp next to the problem that you'd like to jump to and it takes you straight to that problem in the video. 8th grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics, unit 3, lesson 2, graphs of proportional relationships. Problem number one. The tortoise and the hare are having a race. After the hare runs 16 miles, the tortoise has only run 4 miles. The relationship between the distance x the tortoise runs in miles for every y miles the hare runs is y equals 4 times x. Graph the relationship. First, I think I'll make a table to get some coordinates. The x value will be on the left side of the table and the y value will be on the right side of the table. Remember, all the y values will be 4 times greater than x. What's 4 times greater than 0? 0. What's 4 times greater than 1? 4. What's 4 times greater than 2? 8. If you look closely, you can see that I plotted each of these sets of coordinates and they all fall on this line. The horizontal axis or the x-axis represents the distance that the tortoise runs in miles and the vertical axis or the y-axis represents the distance the hare runs in miles. Problem number two. This table shows a proportional relationship between the weight on a spring scale and the distance the spring has stretched. A. Complete the table. We have distance in centimeters on the left side of the table and the weight in newtons on the right side of the table. In the first proportional relationship, we can say that 28 newtons pulls the spring a distance of 20 centimeters. 28 divided by 20 equals 1 and 4 tenths. The proportional relationship is 1 and 4 tenths, which means 28 is 1 and 4 tenths times larger than 20, or 20 is 1 and 4 tenths smaller than 28. That means that in the next proportion, 55 is 1 and 4 tenths smaller than the unknown weight. 55 times 1 and 4 tenths equals 77. So we know that the unknown weight is 77. 140 is 1 and 4 tenths times larger than the unknown distance. So 140 divided by 1 and 4 tenths equals the unknown distance. The unknown distance is 100 centimeters. And the last one, the distance is 1. 1 is 1 and 4 tenths times smaller than what number? 1 times 1 and 4 tenths equals 1 and 4 tenths. When the distance is 1 centimeter, the weight in newtons is 1 and 4 tenths. And 1 and 4 tenths is equivalent to 14 tenths. Any answer that's equivalent to 1 and 4 tenths or 14 tenths would work. Even 14 tenths can be reduced or simplified to 7 fifths. So 7 fifths would work. In fact, 20 over 28, 55 over 77, 140 over 100, and 7 over 5 all equal 7 fifths. That's what makes their relationships proportional. The weight in newtons is 7 fifths times greater than the distance in centimeters. B. Describe the scales you could use on the x and y axes of a coordinate grid that would show all the distances and weights in the table. If I were to create a graph that represented all these values, I'd have to make sure that I made it large enough to fit the distance from 0 to 100. And the distance would be my horizontal axis or my x-axis. And I'd have to make sure my graph was tall enough that I could represent up to 140 newtons in the weight category. Weight would be represented as my vertical axis or my y-axis. Problem number three, from eighth grade, unit two, lesson six. Find a sequence of rotations, reflections, translations, and dilations showing that one figure is similar to the other. Be specific. 
Give the amount and direction of a translation, a line of reflection, the center and angle of a rotation, and the center and scale factor of a dilation. Wow, that's a mouthful. It sure sounds like a lot of stuff. I'll do the best I can. I'll start by using A as the center point. Looking carefully, I can see that D prime is exactly one unit away from center point A, and point D is three units away from center point A. The figure on the left is a dilation that's one-third scale of the figure on the right. That means that the figure on the left has side lengths that are one-third the length of their corresponding side lengths from the figure on the right. Since point D is three units away from point A, and I'm making a dilation with a scale factor of one-third, one-third of three is one, so point D's new location will be one unit away from point A. Let's move point E. Originally, point E was six units away from point A, and one-third of six is two, so its new location will be two units away from point A. Let's move point C. Point C's original location was six units away from point A, and one-third of six is two, so its new location will be two units away from point A. Let's move point B. Point B's original location was nine units away from point A, and one-third of nine is three, so its new place will be three units away from point A. Connect the points and you can see the dilation with the scale factor one-third. In its current position, it looks like a reflection of the dilation on the left. Next, I'll do a rotation. Look at point E on the figure that we just drew. It's two units away from point E prime on the dilation to the left. Let's move point E clockwise two units. And let's move all the other points clockwise two units. After moving them two units clockwise, we can draw the lines connecting the points. And we will see our figure after a clockwise rotation of two units. Now I've been calling them units just to make it easy, but each one of those units is worth 15 degrees. The reality is it was a 30 degree clockwise rotation. And with this rotation, we've created a reflection across center line A and E. Problem number four from eighth grade, unit two, lesson six. Consider the following dialogue. Andre said, I found two figures that are congruent, so they can't be similar. Diego said, no, they are similar. The scale factor is one. Who is correct? Use the definition of similarity to explain your answer. Here's a definition of similar. Two figures are similar if one can fit exactly over the other after rigid transformations and dilations. The two figures are congruent, meaning they are the same size and shape. And after a rigid transformation or dilation with the scale factor one, they would be similar. So I would agree with Diego. When Diego says, no, they are similar, the scale factor is one. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.